Well, I guess it helps if you turn on the mic. Let's try that again. What's going on guys, Jeff here, Corals Unlimited. Today we got a brand new video for you. We're gonna be taking a look at the Nano Reef Tank and we're gonna be addressing some of the things that I'm seeing. And then we're gonna take some tests, we're gonna see what's going on with the tank and then address some of the problems uh, if we need to address them at all. But we're gonna do that in today's video. But if this is your first time being here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do, Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every single time that I upload a new video. Let's get into it. All right, so here we are. A week later, oh, a week later, candy cane's doing good. Mr. Lipstick is still staying there. I can't, I can't tell. Yeah, I guess you can kind of see it. Mr. Red keeps moving around, so he bounced from over here, wandered back over to here. And then Mr. Zoanthids, is doing good. Things looking all right. Starting to see some diatoms growing and some algae growing on the rock. Turn it white, you can kind of see things going the way that they're going. I didn't do too much cleaning uh, before we started talking about what was going on here. You see algae growing on the rock, algae and diatoms growing on the sand bed. Uh, so that's an indication that uh, things are starting to dirty up a little bit in there. Um, which is a good thing because the tank, you know, we started with uh, some live sand, but the rock was sterile. Now we can see a little hermit crab there about halfway up putting in some work. And for whatever reason, that snail loves that magnet. So every time that magnet gets back over there, he actually followed it over to this side and then was hanging out with it over here. And then we parked it over here and then he keeps going to the magnet. I don't know what. What that is for them, but it's a little security blanket, I guess. Clowns are doing good. Everything's looking pretty good. That one rock flower keeps moving around quite a bit, but um, I guess it is what it is. So what we're gonna do today, since we're starting to see some algae growth cranking, uh, some diatoms cranking, we don't wanna go full ugly stage, um, but we're gonna do a little testing so we can make informed decisions about what is going on with our tank. Because sometimes what you see and what you get for test results can be a little bit different. We'll talk through uh, whatever we get for our results. Uh, we haven't done any water changes on this. All we've done is top the tank off, which it looks like it needs to be topped off. I don't even think we're running socks. No, we are not running socks at all. Um, so basically the tank has just been pushing water around and we've been feeding it. Uh, we've been feeding it really good because we've got some good sized clowns in there. But uh, we're going to do a little bit of testing, see where we're at, and then uh, we'll take it from there. All right, so we got our Hannah set up. Uh, actually, we're setting it up. So we got to go through, connect to the device, and then we got to build out our um, what we want to actually test. So we're going to test alkalinity, calcium, uh, nitrite, 903, phosphate. And then at the bottom, you so you click off whatever you want to test, send off to the device, it uploads, and then this one is still doing the step-by-step -step instruction. So we need to get um, some tank water, and it'll start working through this. And even though that the tank is right next door, what I like to do in most cases is just take a specimen cup or any cup for that matter, make sure it's clean. Um, rinsed out. You can even rinse it with the tank water and then do whatever from there. Um, but grab a little cup of it and bring it to wherever you're testing. It just makes things a little bit more efficient. You're not going back and forth as much. So I'm not going to bore you with the details of the test, but we're going to go through, um, test everything out, and then we'll sit down and talk about what we got for test results. All right, so we got the results back from testing the Nano Reef Tank uh, with the Hanna Master uh, tester. And there's some things that I'm surprised with and there's some things that I'm not surprised with as far as uh, what came back for results. Alkalinity was 5.9 dKH. Now your typical reef tank, you want it somewhere between 8 and 9. Um, and the reason that that is so low is because the tank has just finished cycling. And that is a pretty normal occurrence. So, so for somebody that is just getting started, they set up their tank and you know they start adding corals to the tank. 
uh, and your tank literally has only been cycled you know, for a month or so, there's a really good chance that your alkalinity is really low. And that can be pretty stressful on the corals. Now the corals that we have selected for the Nano Reef Tank are very beginner friendly, forgiving corals. And I'm not super worried about that drop, but we are going to have to address that. And there's a couple different ways that we can do that. One thing that I was really surprised with, uh, with the results that I got from the testing, was the calcium levels, which came in at 398. And th there's probably a couple of reasons for that, but it definitely isn't coral consumption. Uh, but the relationship between alkalinity and calcium can be pretty difficult to understand. And basically, they don't play well with each other. So if your alkalinity uh, is really low, there's a good chance that your calcium is really high. And if your alkalinity is really high, there's a chance that your calcium is really low. You don't always see low alkalinity and low calcium, but the issue with that is once we start making adjustments, let's say with the alkalinity, to try to bring that up, it's gonna drive that calcium even lower. So we have to be very careful about the way in which that we make these adjustments with the tank. And really the relationship with calcium and alkalinity is kind of outside the scope of this video. If you want to see a video on the relationship between calcium and alkalinity and how they impact each other and how they relate to a reef tank, leave a comment down below and I will send you a link to a video on that subject. Now as far as the NO3 goes, I was actually a little bit surprised with that. I was expecting that there wasn't going to be any nitrates at all in the system. Uh, mostly due to the fact that the algae and diatoms are growing and quite often you can see a situation where algae is growing and then you have no nitrates or very low nitrates that are testing and that can just be that the algae is using it all up. And sometimes folks can get confused with that and it can be basically a false negative uh, because if you have algae present in a tank and your results are showing no nitrates, you have nitrates in the system, it's just the algae is using it up. And that can be pretty impactful to corals because corals do need nitrates and phosphates to a degree. And if there's just nothing in the system, that can have a pretty negative impact on them. And last but not least, phosphate tested at 0.15, which is kind of on the high side. And with algae growing in the system and having phosphates present, uh, there's definitely some precautions that we need to take to make sure that we are uh, not ending up in a situation where we just have a bunch of algae growing, whether it be green hair or any other type of film algae. Um, so we're basically in a position now where we need to start regular maintenance with this tank. With all this information, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a water change on the tank. And then in a couple days, I'm gonna do some more testing. And basically what we've done here is got some baseline information. And with a quick water change, cause pretty much all of the parameters are not quite where I want them. Um, instead of getting into like filter media and dosing, I'm probably just gonna do a quick water change and then in a couple days do some more testing to see what we get for results from that. All right, so we're gonna do a little two gallon water change on the Nano. Um, I like the small python, the small short python for this guy, um, especially when we're working with those smaller tanks. Uh, so we're gonna work on the gravel a little bit, um, paying attention that we're not sucking up too much gravel and uh, basically just pull some water out. If you had a auto top off, you'd want to unplug that. We're also going to want to unplug the return pump so we're not just pulling water out of the uh, back chamber. I've made it hard for myself to get to that. And then you just need to remember to plug all that back in once you're done. So starting a siphon, you don't need to put your mouth on the end of it and draw air out, you literally can just sink the line, put a fair amount in there, and then put your thumb over the end, and then pull the line out, put that in your bucket. And then if you pinch the line that's draining, it'll give you more working time and you can kind of control the amount of sand that you're pulling up. And if you want to drop all the sand out, you just close off the siphon completely. Then once you want to start pulling more up, you let, let up a little bit. So you just can slowly control how much you want to pull out. 
and then say in the event that something happens all you need to do is just pull the siphon tube out of the water and that'll stop the siphon or just cinch down on that siphon line once you kind of cleaned up the sand as much as you want to usually I'll just let it go full full siphon and then just let it draw out the water until, until I'm comfortable with it. So the important thing to take away from testing your tank, even though that there is a level of accuracy with it, um, it's really good to kind of have a baseline of information and kind of compare it over time. But, you know, I wouldn't have done a water change on that today. Um, and, you know, just based off assumptions, kind of knew that the alkalinity was low, thought the calcium would be normal. So what I would have done just based off from assuming would be dosing, which you never want to dose without testing, dosing alkalinity, and then probably putting in some phosgard uh, to deal with the phosphates. But because you know everything's a little bit out of whack, really what it comes down to is just doing a water change, a good sized water change, is going to help correct most of those levels. And then you know in a couple of days when we come back and we do some more testing, we'll see what that water change actually did for the tank. And then if some of the parameters are kind of corrected and then some of them are still out of whack, then we can do, you know, maybe it's work with, um, you know, dosing some alkalinity or putting in some type of filter media that's going to help uh, balance things out. But that's really what it comes down to is um, consistency, testing, observing, and basing your decisions off from the information that you're gathering from testing. I'm not quite at the two gallon mark yet, at least on my rough math, but I don't really wanna do much more of a water change than that just because this is a very small tank and big fluctuations is definitely not following the golden rule of consistency. So testing is a very important part of maintaining a successful nano reef tank, but if you want to learn more about nano reef tanks, check this video out. I will see you over there.